All right. Hello, everybody, virtually. Um, my name is Brittany, and this is Brooke today. We're going to be talking through dressing room talk, fitting room talk, um, those types of things. So that'll be this segment. Um, so really quickly, we'll kind of run through just a brief, you know, run through of start to finish, bullet points more so from jumping into the fitting room. We're not going to give the bride the option if she wants to come in or not. We're going. Um, next, your stylist. Or as the stylist, you're going to choose the first dress that she's going to go in. That's where you're going to start. You start leading from the second you bring her in there. We're not going to ask, do you want to come in with me? Or would you prefer, you know, any of that? You're going to jump right in. You're going to pick her dress first as well, too. We'll kind of talk through. We're going to do two different things, both A-lines in here. One we're going to step into, and then one we're going to go over the head as well, just to kind of show that transition between dresses more so. And then getting that conversation going of talking about her fiancé and those emotional questions and connecting questions as well too. So for us here at Ava Loren, we don't have any mirrors in any of the fitting rooms. We don't talk dress, we don't talk likes, dislikes. We're not trying to eliminate from the jump. We're going straight into tell me about your fiance, all of the things because you get emotional in here, you talk through, you build her story in here to utilize out here. We don't need to talk about the dress in here, the dress out here. A little redundant and then you have nothing to stand on when you start curating her story and everything as well too. So you get as much information in here as you can to then use out here. And then we'll talk through, again, just getting her in and out of the dresses, more questions in there, setting her up for success to come out, taking off her watch, making sure the dress is sitting really well on her, uh, popping out as we go back in. And then at the end, we'll kind of talk through good talking points, what you guys might have questions on, um, of what you might think would be a good conversation to have with her, um, and those types of things. Does everyone have mirrors in their fitting rooms? Everybody. Ah, majority win. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we'll kind of talk through pros, cons, all of those things, advantages of maybe not relying on the mirror as much and ways that you do utilize the mirror to maybe encourage pretending there's not one in the fitting room. Um, so we'll talk through those things. Can you see me if I'm in here? Maybe? <laughs> All right, so again, Brooke's our bride, um, and we're going to talk through all the things. This is her entire entourage here, so we're all a really big, happy family. Um, so we're going to hop in. All right, Brooke, come on in with me, and we'll hop into first dress. We'll pretend we close this. All right, so let's hop into first dress. What I'm going to have you do, get down to what you're comfortable in. Know that all construction is built into the gowns as well, too, so you don't really need to rely on a strapless bra, all those types of things. Um, and we'll just kind of talk through that as well. All right. This one I'm going to hand to you. It will actually go over your head as well. Make it a little bit easier. She can be a little tricky in the skirt. All right. So go ahead and shoot your arms up for me. And then I will hand this over. All right. You come back. You always want to wait. You never want to stand there with the dress in your hands like while she's getting changed, just like eagerly waiting. You're keeping yourself busy while she's changing. At that moment, you're ready to get her in. She's ready for you, and there's no you're passing dresses and all the things. All right, so Brooke, tell me about your fiance, kind of all the fun details about you guys. Yeah, absolutely. So our parents actually introduced us. What? What? Were you guys like, was it like neighborhood best friends or like yeah. your parents even went to high school together too? No, yeah, we lived in the same neighborhood for a really long time, but we went to different schools, so we weren't really like in each other's like social Like different circles for yeah, sure. Absolutely. I, so how long has it been since you guys have been together? Yeah, we've been together for like four and a half, five years. Oh my gosh. All right, swing around really quickly and remind me your fiance's name. Will. Oh, Will. And, High school friends, middle school friends, but not really reconnected. Yeah. I love that so much. Oh, I'm excited to hear a little bit more. Go ahead. I'm going to have you pop your watch off for me. All right. We want to make sure that she's sitting nice and good. All right. You ready to show them? All right. All right. You guys ready? First dress. And then she's going to come out. I know. The ooing and the awing. We love it. <laughs> and again, as the stylist, you pick the first dress she's going to be in after talking through Pinterest and the feels of her wedding. You have a good idea of what she's going to want to be in, what, and everyone knows what she wants to be in as well, too. So you start strong to where you're not worried, well, what if everyone hates it and we don't have a mirror in there? 
when we send her on out, no matter what, it's going to be well reciprocated because, well, they love her. So. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Tell me about your fiance. All of the fun things. And so, remind me your fiance's name. Will their parents introduce them? Actually. And so that's all that conversation is. Is asking those questions and what she's saying. Oh yeah, like our parents introduced us. And I was like, oh my goodness, that is so crazy. Like, how did your parents introduce you guys? Like, were you guys family friends? You ask those. You emotionally respond to those questions as well too. You're listening to her, and that gets her excited to continue talking about it as well too. I know it's difficult. Yes. And I put it away from me that way when the gown comes up it's not like hello <laughs> right in front of your face so I spin her around it's easier if she shoots her arms up versus like her head is just here and she's trying to shoot her arms out but that's just if you go over the head when changing brides not everyone does this next one we're gonna step into it because day of hair and makeup is gonna be done as well too so you don't want to be swimming in your dress messing up your hair and makeup too so we'll kind of step in so we're admiring the dress out here ooh ah family loves it we'll head back in and oh, I just love that train. It's so pretty, right? Love it. All right, we'll be right back. And then we close. <laughs> All right, so what you want to do is you want to make sure you're keeping busy in transition between dresses as she's changing out. And you normally, you can feel when she's pretty much out of the dress or ready to change into it. Um, so you're messing with the dresses as she's getting out of this one, and you're ready to just swap dresses with her really quickly so there's no lull kind of in between. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. So, how did your parents introduce you guys? Like, what was what did that look like for you? Yeah, I was home from college and I was just like hanging out at my parents' house. And All right, you can hop out of that one. A little barbecue situation. He was in town too, and so it was kind of like a. Oh my goodness! I'll have you step into this one so you can grab that for me. But yeah, it was super unexpected, um, and it's kind of crazy. And you had that instant connection as well. Yeah. yeah, and your parents knew, and they just waited that long to set you guys up. How yeah. rude. <laughs> I love that story so much. And so when he proposed, did you know that that was coming? Like, did you help pick out the ring? I had no idea. I knew that he was, like, looking for rings. Obviously, we talked about it. But I was so just kind like of like taken aback. I didn't really believe him. I thought it was oh. a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. And I, yeah, I know you're like kind of in shock at first, right? Oh, 100%. Oh, I love that. All right. This is so pretty. I'm really excited. Oh. All right. So we'll talk through. I No, I absolutely love y'all's story. I feel like just all the fun surprises just make up the best story ever as well, too. All right. We're making sure this is straight. All of the things. All right. Next dress. And then we pop out again. But the other dress already up on the hook and everything. Everything zipped up. You want to keep yourself organized in there as much as possible, too. It's not as overwhelming for her. You're keeping that conversation going. We didn't talk. I mean, she talked about the dress a little bit. Uh, <laughs> But you want to kind of avoid that as much as possible, and it can be very difficult. Again, we don't have mirrors in here at all, so we just pretend that mirrors don't exist until we get out here. You never want it to be, we hop in first dress, let's talk about all the laces and all the things. If it's her first dress, we don't want to overwhelm her from the jump. You want to emotionally, strongly from the beginning. We're talking about things, her fiance, we're getting her excited. We're building the anticipation here to where she comes out here and she's excited because she doesn't know what it looks like either. You know, so you want to lead in that direction here that gives you more to use from here out here curating your story and everything as well too so good job bride <laughs> I know it was kind of hard for hearing me jumping around that corner what are main questions kind of off of that as far as the transition yeah it's always the best and so <laughs> like when you're out here yes and no answers even in the dressing room, like, they're like, oh, how long have you guys been together? Five years. You have to dive a little bit deeper. I say you don't run into that scenario a whole lot, but it is a little bit hard when you get that quiet bride that they don't really, it's, they're not getting as excited as you kind of want them to be, I feel, maybe. Um, so you just dive a little bit deeper into those questions, like, oh, five years. So, like, how did you guys meet? And they're like, Starbucks and you're like oh my gosh are you guys like super coffee buffs or anything like that like you kind of get to know their personality a little bit everything they give you is information for you to use some way somehow you might not realize it but you need to listen to them to ask those 
questions to emotionally respond. Even if it's not super emotional, you get excited about those little things. And the more they share, if you're getting excited about those little glimpses in the things, I feel they'll be more prone to share a little bit more as well, too, as they get comfortable. Good question. Anybody else? Whether if you guys have mirrors in there, what do you utilize them for? Like as far as, is that something, first dress, we're like, all right, we do a lot of stuff in here and then we hop out here. Like what does that kind of look like? Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Ex so, yes, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so you kind of see proportionally on the bride's body as you're zipping up pretty much where everything needs to be. Sometimes it might be a little off center everything, but that's why I had Brooks spin around right here. And we're kind of like looking, making sure. I know it's distracting right now. She had her tank top on, but you want to make sure everything looks really nice and flat. For her, you are her mirror. She Obviously, she doesn't see her reflection in that, but you're making sure she's looking good popping off the watch. I don't even know. We did that, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> popping off the watch, setting her up for success out here, making sure you're pulling strong in a dress that you know she's going to like in one way, shape, or form. Um, something that's similar to what she was thinking or matches the feel of her wedding. You know, you pull strongly to where you're not worried about what they're going to think, even if you don't have a mirror in here. So I would encourage you, maybe block the mirror a little bit. You want to talk emotionally a little bit more because it's so much easier for you to do. Cause she's going to want to look in the mirror naturally. They're going to want to be like, oh, I want to see, get a little sneak peek before everybody else because it's intimidating especially if you had like a large party or let's say you're the youngest sibling of six sisters and they're all here and they're ready to like jump down your throat it is intimidating but they're also used to that because it's their sisters you know so you jump out first view normally we don't want them to get a view of the dress in there because you want that magic moment right out here too it depends sometimes it can be like a awkward situation to where the bride like doesn't know where to but like and it depends on which fitting room you're in but a lot of times I like to just get out of the way and let them go make sure the curtains out of the way not everyone has curtains to mess with so maybe your fitting rooms are in the back of the store and they have to walk out to the front you lead them to a certain extent to where they need to go but then you kind of step away and let them be the statement so their people see it for the first time as well too so it definitely depends on your space and how you want to navigate that as well personal preferences and those types of things, but I would let the bride be the statement there because they are just as excited as she is to show them. Yeah, good question. Hopefully that answered that. Yeah? So what do you do in a situation where, like, sometimes brides don't want you in the room at all, and they'll, like, ask you to step out? How do you kind of, like, make a connection where you're not being able to talk through the curtain because, like, no family's there? So normally we just don't even give them the option, and that's why it's so strong to lead from the beginning. They might be like, oh, I have Spanx on. Can I put them on really quickly? And I'll be like, yeah, let me know, and I'll, like, pop right back in or anything. But it's the easiest for them, and you need to educate them as to maybe why you're in there, helping them in and out of the gown, all of those things. It, it does make life easier on them, but that's why we don't even give them the option let's say they are in a large group or maybe it's just mom mom-in-law and bride it's like all right Casey come on in with me and like let's go if you just do it they will do it you know versus giving them all right do you want to come in with me or would you prefer to be alone we don't even give them the question yeah yep and normally it'll come off the conversation of like do I need a bra like do I need these things like actually no all construction is built in and your stylist will be in the fitting room with you helping you zip in so you don't need to worry about a thing giving them that security as well with the pre-call that's a great point um, that also helps but again just leading right into and that's how you assert your leadership in the appointment as well so it's really strong maybe they might want to fight it a little bit jump right on in do it. Yeah, she doesn't want help. And maybe with that certain bride, maybe we kind of let her figure it out a little bit. And you slowly get to work your way in there as she asks for your help, you know? So sometimes those things you do have to navigate a little bit differently. But for the most part, don't even treat it like a question. All right, girl, we're hopping on in. Let's do it. You choose the first dress. You choose the timing of everything. You steer the conversation. You lead in every way possible. Okay.
Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so we do have mirrors on our dressing room. Yeah. And one way you could, we, usually, we do talk about the dresses in the room with them. Okay. Um, just to kind of get their initial thought mm -hmm. and help them kind of process it before they get out. Yeah. And sometimes it is kind of a time saver if they get a dress on and they absolutely hate it. Mm -hmm. So, and then we don't even come out mm -hmm. and then we move to the next. Yeah. So is there, in your mind, like a downside to us doing that? Or I would say pull stronger. As blunt as that is, you want to pull a dress that you know is going to blow her mind, whether, and everyone's a little bit different. Sometimes you let the bride go through and pull dresses. Let's say this bride didn't show you a single photo. You don't have a leg to stand on. You have no idea. You're going in blind and deaf. You have no idea, like, really anything solid to pick up on. Let's say she pulls a dress off the rack and she's like, ooh, this is really pretty. I keep that one in mind, and that's going to be the first dress that we go into. It just makes it really helpful. And again, if they don't get the opportunity to be super critical out here, like I was letting um, a couple groups ago, I had a bride, I put her in exactly a couple of photos that she looked on Pinterest, and she absolutely hated it. It was the first dress that I put her in, I was like, ooh, this is going to be good, she's nice and simple and clean. Absolutely not. And it's like, all right, we know exactly where to not go from here. And then you jump right back in. But then everyone gets to see that, and they get to see that elimination in person as well, too. And then that way, they're not missing anything that's going on in the fitting room as well, too, because the experience is as much for them as it is the bride, too. So you want keep it emotional in here. We don't need to necessarily, all right, do a mini appointment in here and then do the exact same thing out here. Keep it emotional in here. It's fiancé. It's wedding. It's what do you do for a living? What do you do for fun? Things, you know, <laughs> all of those really just fun conversations that help you get to know her a little bit better to where you get to use them out here within your stories, curating her story with her dress and everything, connecting her family in as well. These are all building blocks for what you need out here. We're going to talk through the dress out here. If she doesn't like it, then at least people saw her in a dress and we get to make light of it and she modeled it for us and it looks pretty, but we don't like it and that's okay and then off it goes. So I wouldn't, again, I would encourage you to try to ignore the mirror a little bit. And again, turn her around, just like I did with Brooke. I'm her mirror, I'm making sure everything's straight. We're talking through, we're still talking about her fiance, and I'm like, oh, this is just so pretty. And uh, you and Will's story, like I'm so excited to hear all of the little details about you guys and everything. Uh, I can't wait for them to see this dress. And then you just lead her on out. We ignore the mirrors even there, and they don't know the difference. They don't know, well, with your other brides, they got to see the dress in the mirror. They have no idea. You make it what you need it to be. But I would encourage, kind of ignore the mirror a little bit, keep it more emotional in here, go straight to dress out here and just pull really strongly with a dress that you know she's going to like. She might not love it, we don't always get that lucky, but you know she's at least going to like it, if that makes sense. It doesn't have to be, let's find the dress you love, very first one. I feel that's more of a protection on you to kind of figure it out first and then go out here because it can be very scary and intimidating. Do it. Anybody else? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I think after is super helpful too, but you don't even need a mirror to do that, I would argue as well, because I've done the same thing. I had um, a super large appointment. It was all her mother's friends, and she had no connection to any of these people, and they were inserting all of their commentary, and it didn't make a difference to her, and it was very much a lot. Um, and so we did a lot of the appointment actually in the fitting room, and so we were talking through all the things. She obviously got a glimpse here. Um, she knew pretty much for the most part exactly what she wanted as well too. None of these people did. So we did a lot of work in there, getting her true honest feedback because it's hard to ask a bride sometimes out here like how do you feel like getting down to the nitty-gritty when she's just overwhelmed as well too so I think that's especially helpful digging down in here but also you might not need a mirror to rely on that because she has seen it out here um, but I can see how that would absolutely be an advantage too to kind of take a deeper look into it so I would definitely say after versus like especially for a stress you want that wow to be like here not in there to where everyone wants that same exact experience as she's getting right out here any other questions? Shoot. Yeah. Yeah. 
sometimes, like sometimes they'll be like, I'm gonna leave my bra on and see, but we kind of introduce the discussion of like, maybe if it's messing up the dresses, like we'll take it off, but it feels good for me. And I'll let them maybe for the first dress, but a lot of times you just go behind them, you're zipping behind them anyway, you pop that sucker off. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, because they don't, and they will get comfortable, and you need to, that fitting room is going to be a comfortable space for them as you're transitioning into dresses, and you have to be careful how you do it as well. We're doing this while she's doing this. We're not doing this and this at the same time, if that makes sense too. So normally you just have to be like, all right, we're going to pop bra off, and we're going to hop into first dress. Or we can hop into first dress, and then we'll pop bra off. Sometimes brides are more comfortable that way, but it helps the gown lay so much better and truer to how it will on her wedding day, especially with the strong construction in the gowns as well too. So yeah, I would... It, uh, it depends on the person, so it is a little bit tricky and it is oddly specific, but I would push as hard as you can in the direction of none. <laughs> All right. Any other questions for us? No? Yeah, I think so. Oh, we have one more weird question. Yeah. Okay. So, like, rooms are, like, really huge. They're, like, they're room rooms. They're huge. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, they're, like, this size. And I feel like even in those, like, sometimes when you lay out ball gowns, mm -hmm. like, how do you get two ball gowns? She's getting out of one and getting to the next. Like, I just want to know. Like, I know that's really odd, but I just want to know. Like, getting from one ball gown to the other? Yeah. Like, in here? Oh. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we had a couple questions just now that we just answered as well. One was being, if she doesn't want to take her bra off, how do we navigate that? So we kind of touched on that a little bit. We just got a question. If we're hopping into two ball gowns, how do you fit them in the room or how do you dress her? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a good time. Yeah, no, and of course, everyone's face is different and you obviously acclimate, you know, as you go and what you're used to as well too. But with ball gowns, they all be, they know you kind of preface. It's like, all right, we got some poofy gowns in here. Like, get ready to go for it. And again, sometimes you just might go over their head, and that's when maybe they're taking their dress off. You pull that one, and you kind of hand this one to her a little bit as well too. So you're always you always have dresses in between you. There's no awkward like I'm standing here waiting for you to help me into this dress and everything. You're normally at the point to where she's kind of figuring out on her own as well. Um, but yeah, in here it's normally not too many issues. You you're more conscious of what you pull in there you're not going to pull six ball gowns at one time normally you're maxed out at about two but you just need to be more concerned of like you can put some gowns in other places and just kind of have them in your back pocket too but you wouldn't go in with like eight ball gowns at the same time <laughs> yeah <laughs> I know I'm used to my big room like where is that at no yeah yeah, no, it definitely depends. But yeah, it's normally you kind of keep the limiting or keep the pulling to a limit to a certain extent because you don't want to walk in there to leave yourself no room. You still need to be able to move and everything as well, too. Yeah. I have another question. Yes. So we have had family members like mom or sister say, I want to come in the dressing room. Okay. During COVID, it was super easy to be mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm so sorry. We mm -hmm. only have us in the dressing room. How do we kind of navigate? away yeah. from that or should we try because I mean it, it ruins that emotional connection like you're talking about yeah. with the bride, like with the bride in the fitting room mom or sister sitting there yeah. watching your every move and listening to everything you're saying yeah alright so the question is pretty much like when the mom or the sister really wants to get into the fitting room because obviously they know the bride better than anyone so they feel maybe they don't trust you to a certain point you know sometimes it's coming from you know that heart a little bit um, but I would encourage it's so strong leading from the absolute beginning you establish your dominance, for lack of a better word, right in the beginning, you're like, all right, bride, we're going to hop into the room, come on in with me, and then guys, we'll be right back. And once you gain their trust as well, too, they're not going to want to hop in there and fight over you and speak over you and everything like that as well, too. So once you're leading strong, you're pulling strong gowns as well, too, because it also comes into play, you know, when everyone's pulling dresses during your entire appointment, too, that's always super fun. Um, but I feel it's a similar scenario. But sometimes you welcome them in maybe for a little bit, and you're like, oh, yeah, we were just talking through this one. And like, what's your thoughts sister it's kind of like the mom who wants to talk about her dress a whole lot you invite you validate all the things and then you're like oh yeah I'm super excited like we'll try this one on next like we'll be right or like we'll like pop out in just a second you want to acknowledge them you don't want to just be like stop go away or anything like that because they are just as important in the appointment as your bride is if that makes sense so. how do we handle language barriers Typically, what we run into is normally, like, 
There was one instance, we have a stylist that luckily speaks Spanish as well too, so a lot of times we take care of that. Um, but sometimes what'll happen, let's say maybe the bride is not very fluent in English, but maybe someone in her party is, you really have to rely on that person too. Like you can see your bride's body language and everything, but you they kind of know to speak for them as well too at that point. And the bride knows she has difficulty communicating as well too, but I feel like that's normally when you kind of rely on the guest maybe as your kind of buddy throughout the appointment. And you can be like, oh, I can see she likes this one, like, you know, talking through all the things, really relying on them. I feel you see that more often than not versus an entire party that you don't really understand. Yeah. We use Google Translate. Well, <laughs> have them type it in. Have them type it in. <laughs> I feel like that could work. <laughs> really? It worked. We had a bride on the phone, and or actually, they like walked into the appointment, and she goes, <laughs> and she goes, appointment, and I was like, perfect. <laughs> Dive in. Under, she knows. She knows that she's coming into this space where she's mm -hmm. uncomfortable and she just wants to be heard. I literally, Virginia and I were on the phone with Natalie, who speaks Spanish. I'm on Google Translate and I'm like, when's your wedding date? And we got all the things mm -hmm. and we were like, perfect. We will set this up so that you've got the resources you need. At the end of that a little interaction, we had the best time. She had no idea what I was saying. I had no idea what she was saying. But we were laughing. We were joking. And I was like, I will see you Saturday. She was excited to come in. Yeah. So dive into that. Yeah, with the pre-call especially. Maybe with a walk-in, it's a little bit different as well, too. But normally, I feel there's someone in their party that at least has a little bit of a level up between that language barrier and everything, too, to kind of help them navigate a little bit, too. So, cool, cool. Any other questions? Kind of thinking through. Cool. I think that's a wrap. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Sorry. I'm